It was one of the heaviest snowfalls the island of Sodor had ever experienced. Even with their snowplows, the engines of Sir Topham Hatt's railway found it impossible to clear the tracks and continue their work. <laughs> enough is enough, said a frustrated Sir Topham Hatt. I'll need to call for help if we want to keep the railway running through the winter. The next day, Thomas and Percy were waiting for instructions when they saw a strange sight. A huge flurry of snow flying up from the tracks headed straight towards them. Just marvelous, exclaimed Sir Topham Hatt. We'll have no trouble keeping the tracks clear now that Dustin is here. Thomas and Percy, meet my new steam-powered snow removal engine, Dustin. He's come down from the mountains to help us. Nice to meet you, Dustin, said Thomas as he stared in amazement at the work Dustin had already done. I have a feeling you're going to be really useful during this snowy winter. What's Dustin doing, Sunshine? Clearing snow. Let's see that fan working. Oh, he's clearing snow. Good. He's clearing it right off the tracks. Go, Dustin, go. Go, Dustin, go. Even after the snow had stopped, much of the railway was still covered, and Dustin kept busy clearing the tracks. <laughs> Keep clearing the tracks, Dustin! Whoa, Dustin sure goes fast. Any more on the tracks? Yes, over there. He's good at snow removal, isn't he? Mm -hmm. All the work had stopped. All the snow's out of the tracks? Mm -hmm. Looks like the snow is starting to melt. Then the weather grew warmer and the snow started to melt. Dustin roamed the rails looking for snow to clear, but found none. Without any way to help the railway, Dustin went to stay in an old trackside shed. How can I be really useful if it's not snowing? Dustin wondered sadly. Soon winter turned to spring, and spring blossomed into summer. It's hard to believe the railway was buried in snow just a few months ago, Henry told Thomas. Now it's summer, and we're already preparing for the fall festival and charity race. Henry's comment made Thomas think about Dustin. I wonder what Dustin is doing now that there's no snow, Thomas thought to himself. Thomas went to visit Dustin and noticed he didn't look very cheerful. Dustin explained why he was upset. I'm sorry, Thomas. I don't feel like smiling. I'm a snow removal engine, and it's hard to feel really useful when there's no snow to remove. Suddenly, Thomas had an idea. Come on, Dustin. I think I know a great way for you to help out around the railway. <laughs> Th 
Thomas led Dustin to the Sodor Ice Cream Factory, where a sugar delivery had spilled all over the tracks. Look at that, Dustin, Thomas said as they approached the mounds of sugar. Sure does look like snow to me. I bet it would take a special engine to clear the sugar from the tracks. Dustin grew very excited. It did indeed look like the perfect job for him. But as Dustin's fan struck the sugar, the small grains got caught in his spinning blades. Before long, his fan was very sticky and he was unable to clear the rest of the sugar. Dustin felt very discouraged. A few weeks later, Sir Topham Hatt gave Thomas instructions to shunt trucks at the Vicarage Orchard in preparation for the Fall Festival and Charity Race. Thomas thought about how sad Dustin had been. Surely Dustin would feel better if he could help out at the orchard. After speaking with Thomas, Dustin followed him to the orchard, hoping to help. But he grew doubtful when he looked at the line of trucks. I don't know, Thomas, Dustin said. I've never shunted trucks before. First time for everything, Thomas peeped cheerfully. You'll never know unless you try. And you better hurry, because it looks like a storm is coming. But when Dustin tried, his fan and unusual shape made it the task very difficult. As he pushed the first truck, the apples spilled and were crushed by his spinning blades. Poor Dustin was more discouraged than ever. Are the apples hitting Dustin's blades? Uh -huh. Oh no! Those troublesome trucks. <laughs> we are causing confusion and delay. I'm sorry, Thomas, Dustin said glumly. It seems like there isn't much use for me now. I'm not even fast enough to join the charity race tomorrow. I'll just go back to my shed and wait until winter. Feeling quite hopeless, Dustin left the orchard as the wind started to blow and the rain poured down. The storm raged all through the night. And the next morning, the engines woke to find the railway tracks and countryside covered in debris. The storm had torn down telephone poles and cables. It had blown over trees and bushes. It had scattered garbage everywhere. The island of Sodor was a mess. Sir Topham had arrived that morning to speak with the engines. Today the whole community was supposed to gather as the engines raced to raise money for charity, said Sir Topham Hatt. But the storm has covered the railway with debris, and we won't be able to clear the tracks before the race. Excuse me, sir, said Thomas, but I think I know how we can clear the tracks quickly and still have the race. Sir Topham Hatt looked puzzled as Thomas raced off without further explanation. Go, go, Thomas. Okay, Thomas raced away. A few minutes later, Thomas approached Dustin's shed. Dustin, wake up, he called. The storm had scattered debris everywhere and we need you to clear the tracks so we can still have the charity race. Suddenly, Dustin's frown turned into a huge smile. As he pulled forward, his fan started to turn. You can count on me, Thomas, he said excitedly as the blades easily cut through the limbs and branches blocking the tracks. Wow, he sure is good at clearing tracks. Good job, Dustin. Thomas followed behind as Dustin's fan quickly cleared debris from all over the railway. Finally, when they turned the corner towards the festival raceway, the two engines could see a crowd waiting near the finish line. Is he clearing all the Joby wood too? Dustin slowed to a stop right in front of the bandstand. But Sir Topham Hatt encouraged him to continue. Well, said Sir Topham Hatt, why are you stopping there when the finish line is so close? Keep going, Dustin. Ah. 
Dustin continued forward. As he crossed the finish line, everybody cheered. It looks like you're the first to cross the finish line, Dustin, said Sir Topham Hatt merrily. The mayor awarded Dustin a gold medal. Not just because Dustin had been the first to cross the finish line, but because he had cleared the tracks before the race. I may be the number one engine on Sodor, Thomas told Dustin with a smile, but today it looks like you're the real winner. Yes.